We've been camping in an RV for over five years now. We started with a travel trailer, Winnebago travel trailer, and for the last two years we've been full-timing in this motorhome, the Tiffin Allegro Open Road. And through that time we've gone through a lot of campsite accessories, things that you use outside of the camper uh, while at the campsite, from grills and fire pits to chairs and tents. And we'll go through all of those uh, in this episode, the things that we've liked, things we've replaced, things we're not using anymore, and especially those things that we think are must-haves. I'm Steve. I'm Nancy. And together with Mars the Blind Sheltie and Phoebe the Warrior Princess, we are living our dream. Our goal, to travel the U.S. and Canada while spreading the messages taught to us by our pets of keep smiling, be kind, and be happy. Join us on our travels by subscribing to our channel as we continue our great adventure. We'll go through these campsite accessories in categories, things like water, electric, uh, campsite, in other words, sitting uh, in furniture that you might use outside, uh, and things around a fire. But we're going to also break them down into what we think are must-haves. You probably should get these on your first trip or two uh, out in the RV. Then there's the should-haves, things that we found very helpful uh, in a lot of our RVing. And then there's the nice-to-haves, things you don't necessarily need right away, uh, but you might find that you might want them later on. Now, on the must-haves, I think you need some form of leveling. So we get these uh, small blocks, uh, the orange colored ones, that we can use, we can drive our tires up on, uh, or we can put under different areas of the rig for leveling. I think that's a must-have. Nice to have, we've got the snap pads on our levelers, and we've got the big black, uh, really, leveler pad, if you will, that we like especially when we're on grass or uh, soil somewhere instead of a, a park pad. And this is really where the leveling blocks come in handy for our RV. If we would have tried to level the RV without the leveling blocks, the wheels would have been off the ground. However, uh, by putting the small strip of horse pad that we've bought one big horse pad, uh, cut off four strips, and then with, uh, in this case, three blocks high to get the tires up a little bit more. When we leveled on the leveling jacks, it did not lift the tires off the ground. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. So even, we use the leveling blocks with the travel trailer, but they still come in handy with the motorhome. And this is why I need four sets of leveling blocks, because I've got two tires in the rear that I sometimes have to get out. Uh, usually you don't have to put uh, leveling blocks under more than two tires. Every now and then I've had to put it under three. One item we found that's a nice to have, not necessarily must, uh, and that's a small hydraulic jack. We've used this in a lot of ways. Here it's uh, holding up the steps. But for example, one of our jacks wasn't coming up, so we could use the hydraulic jack to push that jack up all the way. We've used it a, a few times. Another item we found, great investment, these tire covers. We've used them on both the travel trailer and the motorhome, especially on the motorhome for safety purposes and to protect the investment of the tires. With this little elastic, it takes about 30 seconds to put them on. Well worth it. So here where we connect the water to the water faucet, we start with a pressure regulator. Now it's on the back side, but the reason you need a pressure regulator is we've been to campsites where the water pressure actually gets up to 100 PSI. Now that could easily purse the pipes in your RV, so you want to keep that down to around 40 to 50 PSI. A lot of people like to use 50. Some go all the way up to 60 PSI. We like to set ours between 45 and 50. So that's the pressure regulator, the first thing. Then we have a water splitter. And the reason we have the water splitter is we like two water hoses. 
One, that's always for the drinking water. This is the blue hose. I actually use a zero G hose. It's flexible, it's light, it's easy and portable. And then I use a second hose. I make sure it's a different color. We started off with a gray zero G. I've gone now to this pocket hose. Uh, it seems a little bit better in terms of the connections up here. I had problems with that. So the splitter is so that I can use both hoses at the same time. Now the splitter does come with shutoff valves. So I can shut off or shut on the water from here. So for example, right now, I don't need any for my black tank flush, so I'm not flowing any water to that hose, but the water is flowing to my water hose. So pressure regulator, splitter, two hoses. Those are all must-haves. So here's my uh, basket of water accessories that are the should-haves and nice-to-haves. Let's take a peek. <laughs> Start off with a very small camping folding chair. I find when I'm dumping uh, and flushing my tanks, nice just to sit down a little bit. Now, this is actually just a simple spray bottle, but I have a solution of bleach and fresh water. And that's what I use to rinse everything before and after. So for example, go ahead and rinse off the hydrant before you con connect up your water hoses to it, making sure that you're sanitizing that. And I can sanitize anything that after I'm uh, through flushing. I've got a spare, this is a nice to have. We had an extra one, it's a spare splitter. We've got gloves. Uh, those are probably should have cleaning, wipes, all of those. But what's probably more important in here this little gadget, sometimes you'll run up against a faucet that doesn't have threads. So this can go up on the faucet and you can run your threaded hose to. So that's a nice to have. You probably don't need it until you need it and then you can probably get it. Also an extra, we have a 25 foot water hose. So this is an extra 25 foot water hose. This is my potable drinking water hose. Again, never use this for rinsing or flushing the tanks. This is only used for drinking water. So that's a definite should have. Now you might not need it those initial few trips, but when you find you're 50 feet or so away from the water hydrant, you're definitely gonna to wanna to have it. And that's one of those things that you probably can just buy at the camp store or at the campground that you're at. But if you want a very specific hose, we definitely wanted these zero G hoses, which are light. And I also keep my color coding. So I ordered this online. We also have a spare gray hose that's another 25 foot hose. Actually, it's a 50 foot gray hose. And then we use that for all of our rinsing. Again, an extra hose. That's probably a should have. One other item for the water that's a must have is a water filter. Now we purchased this external water filter. It's a simple uh, Camco water filter. Um, and it does a lot of the sediment and large particle filtering for us. And we got this on our uh, travel trailer. Now, the Tiffin comes with a water filter, so we actually left that in place, and so we're using both water filters right now. But this is really for external water, and it's good for bathing, you know, using the, for the dishes and, and all of the water for that. But for drinking water, internally, we actually have what's called a Berkey water filtration system, and we found that perfect. It takes everything out. 99.9, uh, .9, it's one of those 99.99% whatever, including bacteria out of the water. So that's what we use for our drinking water and for water for our pets inside. But everything else, these water filters do a pretty good job of taking out those large particles. A couple of other nice to haves while we're here at the utility bay. We got these very short stainless steel connectors that are connected to elbows for the utility bay. And these are really, really helpful for us. And that way, we're always leaving the connections outside. We store them inside, of course, when we're traveling, but the water hose can connect to this. We don't have to connect the elbow, disconnect the elbow and everything else. Second thing, these are definitely a should have, is a water shutoff valve. So for example, on the city water connection, I can cut it off when I know I'm about getting full uh, on my tanks and cut it back on. Tank flush, I can again, cut it on. And then a third item here is a flow meter. So when I'm flushing out my tanks, I can turn the tank flush on, watch this when it reaches five gallons, and then turn it back off. So a flow meter, knowing how much water is going into your system is great. Trust me on this one. I've overflowed the, the black tank and that's not a pretty sight. So flow meter, shut off valve, 
elbow, as well as, in this case, the stainless steel extensions. I think all of these are should-haves. Keep finding little additions in the utility bay. This is an important area, but one addition we did was we changed out this little external shower hose again with this flexible metal hose. We find these much more durable. And I replaced the cheap little plastic spray head with a true water spray head. So we can wash the dogs out here. We can do a lot more with this spray head, rinsing out the sewer pipes or whatever we might want to rinse out with um, over what that little plastic shower head that was there. So this I would categorize as a nice to have, but it's really nice to have when you need it. Uh, in the utility bay, probably one other nice to have, spare water pump. We keep that in one of the front bays, but uh, we found that if you're running out of water pump and you need it, that's when you need the water. So having a spare water pump is, we don't get tons of spare parts for the RV, but that's one we keep. One other thing in the water bays that's really important are flood sensors. So this is our flood sensor. We have one that's under the sink in the kitchen, under the sink in the bathroom, and this one in the utility bay. And they've come in handy. Now this one has gone off a couple of times because something's dripped in the utility bay. Uh, more of an annoyance, but I, I'd rather have it here in case some of the lines start to drip. But we did find that when we were traveling one day, the flood sensor in the kitchen went off because something fell, accidentally hit the faucet. We had accidentally left the water pump on. Should turn the water pump off when you're traveling. And we had water flowing into the sink and then overflowing just a little bit. Uh, underneath. So we were able to stop that right away because of the flood sensors. The second thing we have here, uh, temperature sensors. And we have temperature sensors because if we're in freezing temperatures, we want to know when the utility bay starts to get close to those freezing temperatures and we need to add more heat. So let's talk sewer. Well, the must have a sewer hose. Uh, you gotta, if you want to dump your tanks, you're going to need a sewer hose. And we like this Rhino hose. It has a clear uh, elbow here so I can see what's coming out. But in addition to that, we oftentimes get uh, clear extensions that we can put straight onto the utility bay so we know when our valves are open, when something's coming out, we know when the flow of uh, water from our tanks has emptied and stopped. So clear views are probably a should have. Now, we found also, I think, a should have at least one of these risers for your sewer hose because a lot of sewer hoses are all on different levels and being able to slope it down, water has to run downhill, uh, has been a very big help. Uh, now, a nice to have, we actually have two of these. Why? Because we also have another extension. Sometimes the sewer hose is a little bit further away and we need a second extension. So I think a second extension is a nice, it's, excuse me, that's a should have. A third extension, which we had to use one time, is a nice to have. So I probably wouldn't get the third extension until you find you're in a location where you definitely need it. And again, that's something you can probably pick up at the campground store. Now, along with those for the sewer, we also got a macerator pump. And you can see our videos on the macerator pumps that we use. Uh, and we use these when we're, say, mooch docking or at a site where the septic system is maybe 75 yards away. And we can then use the macerator pump to pump our uh, tanks to the septic system. Uh, and that's come in very handy when we've mooch docked at friends' or relatives' houses. So that's uh, nice to have. Uh, if you're going to be in that situation, it's a should have. Uh, we found these better than those uh, honey blue honey wagons of hauling the water around because we did have that at one time and we've opted for the macerator pump over the honey wagon for sure. Now, there are times that you might need a honey wagon for those that are camping out in the desert and they want to be able to haul their wastewater miles away. Well, you can't do that with a macerator pump. A honey wagon might be best for you in that situation. So what about electric? Well, you definitely need an electric cord. Now we have a 50 amp here, we had a 30 amp on the trailer. So the electric cord was separate on the travel trailer and that's something we had to purchase separately. Uh, this one came with the rig, but what we definitely think is a should have is some type of surge protector. We use the Power Watchdog and this is a 50 amp smart surge protector. Uh, and we found it very helpful because pedestals sometimes have uh, the ground problems or 
wired in reverse polarity and different issues that you can find at different campsites. So this helps protect us against any problems and also against those huge surges that might come from the campground. Now, that's a definite should have, we think. The cord is a must have. Probably a should have or a couple of adapters. Right now we're a 50 amp circuit, but we're plugged into a 30 amp uh, pedestal. So we need this dog bone that goes from 50 amp to 30 amp. If you're in a travel trailer and you have a 30 amp, you might need a 30 amp to a 50 amp. We also have one other adapter that we can go from the 30 amp just to a 20 amp. So let's say we're uh, sitting in the driveway of a friend's house. I can plug into a 20 amp uh, and with our electrical system, I can limit only a draw to say 18 amps, so I'm never drawing. So it'll at least trickle charge uh, my batteries while we're on that 20 amp system. So those I think are definite should have. You need a dog bone for whatever adapter to 30 amp to 50 amp or 50 amp to 30 amp, and probably something that goes from a 30 amp to a 20 amp plug as well. Now for us, uh, nice to have was the enhancements to the electrical system we did. Uh, there's a link in the description to our solar uh, install and everything that we have with the lithium batteries and the inverter. What this allows us to do is uh, go overnight, camp at a harvest host or a Walmart parking lot, and I don't worry about electricity uh, while I'm driving trips like that, where I'm not plugged in for several days in a row. Because I get solar during the day, I get solar when I'm driving, I mean I get charging when I'm driving, and solar during the day. So it all works out in the end. In short, the electrical system we have is 1200 watts of solar uh, on the roof and six 100 amp hour lithium batteries. That I would call a mid-sized system. I cannot run ACs for hours on end off of that, but I can run the ACs for a couple of hours. And if I am conscious about our consumption, I can run everything including our residential fridge inside of the RV uh, for several days. A generator's unique. Uh, if you plan to go to a lot of campgrounds, a generator's nice to have, it's not something that's not necessary. But if you plan to go off grid a lot and boondock where you don't have electrical hookups, uh, even if you get a solar system like we do, I think a generator definitely will come in handy uh, when you get into those very hot temperatures and you need to run the AC for a while. So generator, well, that's a should have if you do a lot of off grid camping and a nice to have if you don't. Now, one other thing while we're here at the electrical post, cable. Uh, some campgrounds will have cable TV, but they don't provide a cable for you. So we got this 25-foot uh, cable. Again, something you can probably pick up at a camp store so you don't need right away. So we're going to call that a nice to have if you want to use the cable TV. Well, one of the first things you think about uh, when setting up a campsite is the lawn furniture. What lawn furniture do you really need and what's the nice to have? Now, we're actually at a campground just outside of uh, Webster, New Hampshire, and we're finding we really like this campsite. It's got large campsites, so you could bring a lot of lawn furniture here if you want. We were able to set up our clamshell tent. We were able to set up the pen for the dogs. We still got the picnic table outside of that, the fire pit, and the chairs. So what chairs do we have? Well, we've settled on two definite chairs. Those we think are must-haves. You have to have a chair for everybody. Uh, in your party. So I've got the rocker chair for me that I found I like best and the other standing rocker that uh, Nancy has for herself. Over time we've gone through a couple of different iterations of chairs but hopefully you'll find the chair that you really like and stick with that one. It also needs to be uh, flexible enough to fit in whatever storage you have. Now we also have a dog bed. Yeah, I think this is a nice to have for those of you with pets. We found our dogs really don't use this very much, so we'll probably do away with the dog bed. Uh, you also should have extra chairs. We've got a couple of small, very portable camping chairs that we put in the back of our Jeep. That way when we're traveling out or whatever on a hike or to want to do a picnic when we're driving in the Jeep, we have those camp chairs, but we can also bring them out on the campsite. Those are all I think should have. Two extra camp chairs in case you have guests are for portable. And then if you want to get more chairs than that, well, those are nice to have chairs. Uh, you don't want to overdo it too much with the lawn furniture because it can quickly fill up your outdoor storage. This is probably what I would classify as a luxury item. Padded seats for the picnic bench. Nancy saw them. She really wanted them. Yeah, so we got them. Definitely not a must-have or should-have item. Probably more of a luxury item. 
along with uh, chairs, there's tables. So the, we've got three tables with us. This is a nice little small portable plastic table. It's used to hold drinks, sits uh, between our rockers. And then we have two tables for cooking. So let's talk cooking. Now we started with this wood roll-up table. Uh, and then I've gone to these aluminum collapsible tables. Uh, having at least one, uh, two is really nice to have, but I think you should have at least one if you're going to do any kind of outdoor cooking. Uh, and having two, well, that's kind of nice. So I've gone through a griddle, a grill, uh, a propane griddle, uh, and we actually have a smoker. So what we've come up with is, I like this small electric blackstone griddle because I love cooking on a griddle. I found griddles are more versatile than grills. And if I have to choose between one or the other, I'm gonna go with a griddle. Others might like a grill better, but this is mine. If I really wanna grill something, I can start a campfire and put a grill on the campfire. So the griddle is one, and then our smoker that we have underneath, that's a nice to have. So a should have is your outdoor cooking. Choose the one you want. You might be able to see the smoker in its bag behind everything. That's why we don't always take it out. It does take a little bit to get it out and get it set up. Now, for those of you with pets, I think another nice to have uh, is an outdoor pen. Uh, you can just go ahead and put your pets outside with a leash and you tag the, you know, anchor the leash somewhere. Uh, a lot of people do that often, but we found that a pen can be very helpful. One note about the pen, uh, it's meant to keep our small dogs in, but large dogs can jump over this pen. So don't assume that pen's gonna protect you from other large dogs in the campground, if that's a concern of yours. Also, for those of you with pets, we like this small outdoor trash can that we use as a poop container for all those poop bags. This one we call trailer trash. Now, in our outdoor, we also have what we call a clamshell. And a lot of times you might end up in a place that has a lot of bugs or, and you might want to keep out of the sun. Well, that's what the, this clamshell is for. Some type of tent covering for outdoor is great. Now, we do have our awning, uh, but I think one of the nice to haves on the awning, or I'm going to put this as a should have, are these tie downs for the awnings. Because anytime wind gusts can get up 20 miles an hour or above, we have to take our awning in. If I put the tie downs on, I can probably leave these awnings out when the wind gusts get up to around 30 miles per hour. If it gets much more above that, I'll usually take the awning in. Now for the tie downs, we've gone with this tie boss system. Uh, it's almost like what mountain climbers use. So here it's a little loose. I simply loosen this up, pull it taut, the teeth grab it, and now I'm a lot tighter. Camp rugs are another what I call nice to have. I don't think they're necessarily. Uh, go try camping a little bit without it and then uh, find a, a camp rug, maybe one. We've ended up with two camp rugs, but I think probably may, uh, should have is a floor mat of some type uh, for going in the R rig. So I think the Floor mats are more important than the camp rugs, but camp rugs, well, they're nice to have when you have them. Another nice to have, yep, there's, we've got two floor mats. We've got a floor mat here and also an entry step. We found that this step very helpful. Sometimes when you're in a high spot and the stairs are high off of it, we can adjust this step to either make it more level or make it higher or lower, depending upon how far that first step is. So those, definitely nice to haves. Should have on the floor mat, nice to have on the step riser. Another little item we found very helpful are these little small solar lights for outside. This one especially that we've been able to attach and it stayed to the side of the RV powered by solar and it senses when you're out here and will turn on the light when you're coming in and out at nighttime. This we found very helpful, especially if we don't want to leave our outside awning lights all night long, uh, bothering some of the camp neighbors. For those of us who work from the road, uh, we work part-time still. 
Uh, and I use the internet for uh, most of your entertainment, as in streaming, because we don't have satellite TV. Well, you're going to want a good internet system. Basically, what we have is a router with an AT&T card, SIM card, and a Verizon SIM card, both on grandfathered unlimited plans uh, that pretty much have covered us most of the places we need. A lot of people are touting the Starlink, and yeah, that would be a nice addition, but so far we've been pretty happy with the two different uh, cell networks for coverage in the United States and Canada. Another one of those items we've had for the campground that we purchased at one time and don't use anymore, and that's a propane fire pit. Nancy still kind of likes the idea of a propane fire pit, but the extra weight, the hassle, we almost never really used it. Instead, we use primarily the real wood fire pits at the campsites when we want a fireplace. Now, one of the reasons we go RVing in camp is to get outdoors. And one of the nice to haves that I found that gets me outdoors, well, it's these e-bikes. Now the e-bikes, I say, are nice to have. Um, at our age, it does give us exercise. Do not get me wrong, this is not something that, oh yeah, you could put it on full power all the time and not pedal. But I like to pedal with the pedal assist. Uh, but the e-bikes get me up hills and it actually encourages me to get out and ride the bikes because I don't have to worry about pedaling uphill if I uh, need to. So e-bikes, that's a definite nice to have if you want to get outside. We have the electric e-bikes. Nancy has one and I have another. We've also put a basket on so I can actually go pick up large uh, boxes uh, from the campsite that we might have shipped on it. Uh, and we've also put uh, small carriers on the front so that we can take Mars and Phoebe out for rides if we like. Now, when you get an investment like this, you want to protect it. So we also got these heavy duty uh, bike covers. These, uh, we've gone through about three iterations of bike covers and these so far definitely appear to be the best. Uh, they definitely seem to be a lot more robust. They're bigger and they cover the entire bike. So pro bike tool, bike cover. And with the bikes come a heavy duty bike rack that does support electric bikes because they are heavier than normal bikes. So this is a Hollywood rack bike rack. We found very, very good. Put on the back of our Jeep that's towed behind the RV. One item that's not a campsite accessory, but an outside accessory, a slide topper. We've had this on both our travel trailer and motorhome. And if you don't have them, we highly recommend you look at those. We're going to call these a should have. Now, this is a good example of a nice campsite, but a little tight. Very little room for all those camping accessories you get. So a lot of those just stay in the storage bin for this campsite. Whenever you're deciding whether something's a must have, a nice to have, or a should have, think about how long it takes to set up and break down and how often you might actually use it. Clam's a great item, but uh, it does pop up pretty good, but bringing down all the shades and having to take it in when we have rain or uh, wind, well, that can be a hassle sometimes. So as a result, we probably don't use it as much as we originally thought we would. Hence, it's a nice to have. So that's just a short tour of our campsite and some of the items that we've picked up over time that we found we really do like. Now, I will admit, we've gotten some items that we didn't use. We got a honey wagon one time. I've replaced that with the macerator pump. Uh, we've gotten different types of grills that we simply did not want to carry, were too heavy, or for some other reason, didn't want to take with us. So sometimes you, you got to go through, you know, plan A, plan B for some of these items, but eventually I think you'll find it. But I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, we'll try to put links down in the description of some of those items that we can find and where you can find those. Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, and as always, keep smiling and be kind.